To become a great fantasy author, you need to read a lot and write a lot. There's no getting around it. But over my writing career, I've discovered a few really easy habits that you can do on top of that to accelerate your growth as a storyteller. The first one is so easy, yet so ridiculously effective, and that is to ask people why they enjoy the stories that they enjoy. So whenever someone tells me that they like a book or they liked a movie, I always ask them, why? What was it that you enjoyed? What was it that you connected to the characters about? And I always find new insights into the sort of psychology of story from this process. So for example, the other night I was at a Halloween party. I was dressed up as my man, Tom Cruise from Maverick. Such a good film, such a good film. And it obviously led to a lot of conversations with people about that movie and about how amazing it was. And I was just asking people, you know, why did you enjoy it so much? What were the scenes that really stood out to you? Why did you find this character enjoyable? And obviously you don't need to go super psycho with this. You don't need to be like probing extremely deeply into why people, you know, are liking these things if they're not up for the, the story discussions. Although I often do tend to go down that path, but it's just simply about approaching life with the mindset of understanding the psychology of why some stories resonate with people and why others don't. This leads really neatly into the next non-writing habit that will improve your fantasy storytelling, and it is to note one storytelling lesson from every movie you watch. So I realized a while back that I probably watch more movies than books that I read, simply because a book is, you know, usually eight to 10 hours of reading. And while I still read a lot, I probably read, you know, 40 to 50 books a year. I, I do tend to end up watching more movies. And something that I realized was that if I simply just noted down one storytelling lesson from every movie that I've watched, by the end of a year, you know, there may be close to 100 lessons that I could be pulling out from all these different movies. And what this is really doing is it's speeding up your learning loop. So it's one thing to just watch a film and just sort of passively enjoy it. And while I am watching films, you know, I'm not necessarily sitting there with my writer brain on trying to deconstruct it. I want to enjoy it. I want to experience it as, as a viewer. But as soon as the movie's over, I do like to reflect on it and ask myself, First of all, what would I give that movie out of a 10? And then second of all, what is something I can learn from it that I can apply to my own writing? And when you can do this, you'll quickly develop a much faster feedback loop to improve your own fantasy stories. So originally I did this process in a big old Google document where I just listed out movies and I put down one writing lesson for each of them. Very quickly I realized that there were some movies that I was writing you know, two or three or, or sometimes five different writing lessons from. So I actually moved it over to a Notion database, which is what I use today. So for example, the other night I saw The Killer, a new David Fincher film with my friend Johnny. And here is me sort of inputting that movie into the database and putting down the main writing lessons that I learned from it. Uh, down in the description for this video, I'll put a link to that free Notion template, which you can duplicate into your own Notion workbook if you would like to kind of use the same structure that I use to write down my movie lessons. Not writing habit three is to say yes to new experiences. Personally, I don't really think you can be that great of a writer if you kind of just chain yourself to your desk and you're just constantly staring at your screen all day. I think you need to get out there and you need to live. You need to have these experiences and these uh, sort of emotional highs and lows to draw from so that your stories feel like they are infused with a rich sense of realism and like they are actually coming from an authentic place. So to that end, the philosophy I've always tried to carry through my life is whenever I'm presented with a new experience that I haven't done before, I try my best to say yes. I try my best to push myself out of my comfort zone and to either have a good time or have a good story. A few years ago, my cousin asked if I wanted to go rock climbing with him. And I'd done a, a tiny little bit of climbing back when I was a kid, but nothing really serious. And so I went along to a bouldering gym with him and it was the scariest experience of my life. Like climbing, you know, two or three meters above the ground and then falling off these walls and landing on these crash mats. It was absolutely terrifying. And there were so many points in that experience where I thought I only have to get through this session and then I will never do bouldering again. But I kind of kept going back every you know month or so with him, mostly just to hang out. And then I gradually became obsessed with the sport. Nowadays, I, I go bouldering two or three times a week. And now I would consider it such an important part of my sort of mental health toolkit for de-stressing, for relaxing, and just the physical problem solving aspect of bouldering is so much fun and incredibly rewarding. And then from a writing perspective, when you say yes to a new experience like this and you become very obsessed with something as I have done with bouldering, then you can start drawing some truths and some details from that into your story. So for example, in Kingdom of Dragons, which is my latest fantasy book, there is a scene where the main character, Roven, has to climb up this massive palace. And the realism that I feel I was able to infuse in that scene was directly as a, as a result of 
becoming quite a competent rock climber over the past few years. And that realism would not have been possible if I hadn't have said yes to that new experience of going and trying out this thing, which has now become a massive hobby, probably one of the biggest hobbies I have outside of my writing. And it also leads into the next non-writing habit, which is to chase physical excellence. So to perform at a top mental level as a writer, you need to be thinking about the fact that your brain is housed within a physical form. It's housed within your body. So if you are not hitting the basics of diet, sleep, and exercise, then you're not really gonna be approaching your writing from a state of maximum focus or, or maximum energy. So as much as possible, you have to hit those basics. And I, I know this is something that gets talked about all the time, but I think it's really important to always be asking yourself, am I executing at a 10 out of 10 on my sleep and my diet and my exercise? And if you're not, how can you improve those by a couple of percentage points every single day? But I've called this non-writing habit chase physical excellence, not physical basics. And the reason for that is because I think that the mindset you get from setting yourself a, a difficult physical challenge, whether it's losing weight or building muscle or trying to improve your mile run time or attempting to climb a particular route in the gym, this experience of trying to push yourself rewires and reconfigures your understanding of your capabilities. Confidence comes from evidence, from having evidence of accomplishing difficult things in reality, which then makes you approach other things that might appear difficult to other people with the sense that you can get this done. And writing a book is a hugely difficult feat. You know, the idea of putting down 80,000 words, 100,000 words on paper, whatever it is, and then having to edit it, and then having to try to get it published, and then having to try to get people reading it, all of this is a very daunting process. But I think that if you build confidence through chasing physical excellence in your life, and that can mean a lot of different things for whatever it is to you, right? Like. If you are in a position where physical excellence is simply just going for like a 10 or 20 minute walk every day, that's great. If you're in a position where physical excellence is, you know, just trying to absolutely destroy yourself in the gym and, and trying to absolutely hit, you know, new PRs every single time you go there, that's awesome as well. For me personally, I think that every time I've been on a long run and when I've been pushing myself to get through it, the sort of endurance and the mental clarity that comes through that process it is such a direct map to the writing experience, to being in that writing session where you are, you know, 500 words in and you're feeling, oh, maybe I've done enough for the day. Maybe I should kind of get out of here. But then you push yourself and you break through a wall and you discover new insights into your character and you kind of get into that flow state. And then you look up and you've written 2000 words for the day. Obviously, you don't need to be pushing yourself physically to reach that. But I can't help but think that there is a strong correlation between the two. And then our non-writing habit number five is to follow your own curiosities. If you wanna be writing original fantasy stories, then you need to be an original person. You need to have a combination of passions and curiosity and influences that no one else does on the planet. And the way that I think you create that is by just following whatever you're curious about, even if it doesn't feel like it makes sense or doesn't fit into some grand vision of your life. So for example, right now, you know, when it comes to my reading, I'm reading a Western by uh, Royal Harding, who's actually one of my story coaching clients. Royal Harding is a pen name for him. Uh, I'm also reading a book on the history of work, kind of stepping through everything about humanity's relationship to work, all the way from like bacteria and agriculture and hunter-gatherer societies, all the way through to like, you know, the modern kind of commercial landscape. And then I'm also reading a book on the history of text adventures games. So 50 years of text adventures by Aaron A. Reed. I actually interviewed him uh, about two, maybe one and a half years ago when this book was coming out on Kickstarter. And these are like such a wide variety of influences and you would look at them and go like, this is kind of random. You've got a nonfiction book here. You've got a history book here. You've got a Western here. But I actually think it's just about you know, pursuing whatever interests you, even if you don't feel like it's super relevant to the situation you're in or the fantasy story that you're writing. And if you look on the bookshelf behind me, it's not just fantasy books up there, even though I am a fantasy author. There are, you know, memoirs, there are business books, there are nonfiction, you know, history books in there. There are sci-fi books, there are classics in there. There's a huge range of stuff and it just comes down to trying to read as widely as possible, trying to have as many influences as I possibly can. And this creates a kind of big soup that you can then pour, pull from as a author. As Neil Gaiman said, Tolkien didn't read big Tolkien-esque fantasies. He read books on Finnish philology. You go and read outside your comfort zone. Go and learn stuff. And it's not that reading epic fantasy books is wrong by any means. Like, go and read epic fantasy books as well if that's what you want to write. And, you know, if you're looking for a good book to read, Kingdom of Dragons is available on Kickstarter for only a couple more days at this point. So if you want to get a 
signed deluxe edition that has some beautiful interior illustrations in it um, of my latest fantasy book, then go to the link in the description down below and get it on Kickstarter. And this brings me to our sixth non-writing habit that makes you a better fantasy writer, which is real world research. So for example, uh, a few weeks ago, I got this sword here to make some cool thumbnail photos for my YouTube videos. And I think intellectually, I understood how heavy a, a long sword like this would be if you were swinging it in a battle. But when I actually picked it up out of the box, I was really shocked by how much this thing weighed. And it made you me realize like in a real practical way, if I was to be writing a scene about someone using this in a battle, there are a lot of details that you could kind of infuse into the story to make it feel more realistic. The sense of how you might want to try to rest it while you're not using it to alleviate some of that weight from your wrist. Perhaps the pain that comes along in your wrist of using this thing. Or even thinking about the importance of this pommel here at the end to provide a bit of a counterweight from the sword. So as much as possible when you're writing your fantasy books, you want to be like doing practical research about the scenes you're trying to write. Obviously not all of us can fly on a dragon or kind of be transported back to medieval times, but if there's something you can do to somewhat simulate the experience that your characters will be going through, it's always worthwhile pursuing those opportunities just to give yourself that little bit of extra realism and to give yourself a few more specific details that you can use to convince readers that you are an absolute authority on this world and that it is not just this facade or this, this cutout that's in the background of your story, but it is something that is really well thought out and has a lot of depth and realism to it. And then the final non-writing habit that makes you a better fantasy writer, and perhaps the most important one out of everything on this list, is the practice of amor fati, which is a Stoic saying coming from the writings of people like Marcus Aurelius and other great Stoic thinkers about loving fate. So that's what amor fati means. It means love fate. And I think it's so important, whichever stage of the writing process you're in, whether you're working on your very first book, whether you are, you know, just starting to get some stuff published and, and starting to kind of go through that grind of getting people to review your book and getting readers to read your book, or whether you're at the point where you are now a full-time author and you're trying to figure out like how to balance everything and to make this work. I think it's really important to love whatever part of the process you're in because there are certain appeals to each different aspect of the process that people who are in different stages of the writing career will look on with envy. Like I remember when I was starting out as a writer and I had a day job and I was writing on the side and I'd look up to full-time authors with a lot of envy because they were basically having all the time in the world to do the thing that I loved and I thought oh, if only I could get to that point then I'd be so happy. And I heard a lot of full-time authors talk about how they actually miss the early days when they were writing for an hour before they went off to work or an hour in the evening and how there was something special about knowing that there was actually no pressure on that book. There was no one that was waiting for the book. Um, they didn't have to worry about, you know, the reader reception to it. They could just write a story for the pure joy of it. And I think it's really important, just whatever stage of the process you're in, to love fate, to kind of love the part of the process you're in. It doesn't mean that you don't want to keep growing or, or keep moving onwards if your goal is to become a full-time author. And I feel very lucky to get to the point where writing and, and putting out YouTube videos like this is my full-time job. But I think it's really important to just have that practice of loving fate as a way to create more gratitude for it. Because I don't really think that it's very successful to be writing all these books, but to be doing it from a place of drudgery or to be doing it from a place of not really enjoying it too much. And it's really funny talking about this idea because over the past two days, I've done some really great long form uh, podcast interviews, first with Philip Chase over on his channel, and then with the Beard of Darkness over on his channel as well. I'll, I'll link to both of them in the description and the comments down below. But we talked about this idea of trying to stay in love with the process of writing and actually going through that chat and just sort of having them ask me questions about Kingdom of Dragons and my writing process and lots of stuff I haven't actually discussed a lot on this channel. It made me really appreciate like how lucky I, I sort of am for this situation. And so I think that for you with your own writing, it's really important to try to be grateful for the fact that you're on this journey, wherever you're at in this path and to just really enjoy the process because you know, eventually everything goes away. Like we all go to zero in the end and it just comes down to how much you enjoy the journey and how much you enjoyed the ride and the stories that you told along the way. And I think that if you are fueled by gratitude and a love for the process of writing, you will go further than the person who is fueled by envy or fear or greed or any of the other emotions that might give you more velocity and more oomph of motivation at the start, but in the long term, they are corrosive. And ultimately, I think if you want to become a successful writer, the most important thing to do is to fall in love with the process of writing. But every day when you show up to write, asking yourself, why will this be someone's favorite scene? Why am I going to have such a good time writing this? And 
If you can string those days together on a consistent basis, then the writing process just feels like an absolute magical joy. And if you're wanting to take your writing habits to the next level, then you might want to check out my Easy Writing Habits course. It'll teach you how to form an effortless novel writing habit that makes it easy to finish your first drafts over the course of a couple of months. And it condenses everything I've learned from my own writing career of producing over a million words, which has resulted in several published books and also a video game. The course has seen some incredible results for the students who've gone through it so far. I'm really proud in particular of of Josiah, who before he started the course, he'd written about 9,000 words of his book in two years. And within two months of completing the course, he had now written 60,000 words of that novel. And his book is now over 100,000 words. He messaged me the other day to let me know. And it's nearing the completion, which is really, really exciting. Two of my most favorite lessons are the doubling your word counts lessons and the science of habit formation. If you're on the fence and you're serious about writing, go for it. This is someone who has really taken a serious thought at what would you tell yourself 10 years ago when you first started this and he turned it into a video uh videos in a course for people to enjoy and to learn from the things he had to learn over his 10-year career and if you're just starting out this is a boon so go to easywritinghabits.com to enroll in the course and i'll see you on the inside keep writing and keep striving